Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we'll be taking a look at the GP Toys F51 Mid Axe, which as you can see on the front here, they're calling the Aqua Drone because this is actually a waterproof quadcopter. So it's going to be really cool to test out. They had the uh, GP Toys, uh, I believe it was the H2O, um, and that was waterproof. You could fly it and dunk it, and it'd still work fine. So now they have this, but in a micro size. So first, there's like a little, little bag in here, interesting to carry everything. It's kind of weird. We got a quad here. It looks like we're missing a prop, actually. Yeah, there's oh, uh, there's a prop in here. It's broken. It broke in shipping somehow. This is really weird box. So it's kind of cool that they give you some of the stats on the box here, but I definitely don't like this kind of fold-out box. Instruction manual there. All right, so there we go. Everything's out, and I definitely don't like the packaging, but you know. It gets it to you here. So here we have the transmitter. Interesting little short thumb sticks. Um, let's see if they're removable. They're removable, so if you want to add your own custom sticks, you can. But these for a pincher wouldn't be very great as they're just so short here. But for a thumb flyer, they're actually really nice and smooth. I like the tension. Um, looks like we have a flip button up here on your left side, shoulder button, and your rates, your speed up here. So that's really nice that they have them labeled. Then headless mode, return to home, photo, video, then some trims. And let's see, it looks like we have some extra lights on here. So this is really nice that everything is labeled. I quite like this transmitter. And it looks like it might take four AAAs. I'm not sure. There's a screw in the back, so I can't look real quick. Got a bag of a whole bunch of stuff here. So it looks like we have some little clip-on landing gear and prop guards. That's interesting. We've got four spare props, so I'll have to replace that. And they're very big props look like about the rolling spider prop so it should have some decent lift but i'm kind of worried that as the water goes into the body it'll fill up and become really heavy and then not have enough power to get out but you know we'll see we've got actually a little prop removal tool as well that you put this under and then pop them off so that's really cool little sd card reader does it come with yeah it comes with an sd card because this does have a camera as you can see there so get some underwater footage of the fish <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, but here we have a 4 gigabyte uh, micro SD card that is included. So that'll be plenty big. It's probably like a 2 megapixel camera, maybe something less. Looks like we've got a little door for the battery. And it looks like it has two batteries, actually. That's really cool because there's one in there and there's one here. Let me see if I can get this out so we can see if they are the same size. All right. So there we go. So two batteries. That is super awesome. Uh, let's see, it says it's a 400 milliamp hour 1S. So yeah, they're the exact same batteries, but awesome that you get two. And this little charger you get, you get a little tiny screwdriver as well. This little charger plugs into here, and it's a dual port charger. You can see a port on each side with two red lights, and then a standard USB to charge from your computer or like a wall outlet from like a cell phone charger. So a dual charger and dual batteries, that is awesome. It'll get you in the air twice as much. Let's check out, uh, looks like the other cable is smushed in here. I can't get that out without pliers or tweezers because it's smushed in there. Let's see, but we have an on off switch and uh, yeah, the camera has quite a bit of down angle to it. As you can see, like 25 degrees down angle. So you're not going to be getting any flying footage, mainly just hovering like up above your house. But you know, it'll, it'll, it's, the camera's pretty bad anyways. They're all pretty bad, but you can at least see what your house looks like from above or whatever. So yeah, that was pretty good. So now let's, um, I'll charge it up. I'll fly it around a little bit get some um, tests, some charge times and flight time numbers and just feel it out. And then I'll do an indoor flight for you and then we'll take it out into the lake and I'll dunk it and see if we can fly around out there and if it really is waterproof. So let's get to that. All right, so here we are for the indoor flight of the GP Toys F51 Mid-Axe. And the battery bay is actually in the front here with this little tab and I don't quite like it. There's not, you have to really smush the batteries, uh, cables in there and then this is hard to get shut and that doesn't really stay shut. and it can come off, so that's just, I don't really like the battery bay, but you know, it, it works. And then the props are also very loose. I found they keep popping off in um, a lot of crashes, so if you do that, make sure you put on some of the spare props. They should fit a little tighter, so turn on the quad here. Turn on the remote, and it just binds right away, and it does take four AAAs, like I assumed. Um, binds right away. And uh, yeah, you got some lights in the bottom. You have green in the back and red in the front. I switched the propellers. It originally comes with black in the front, 
but I put the orange to the front here, and you just switch them diagonally. You just swap these two, and then swap these two to get that. So let's take off here, and low rate, and since it has large props, actually let's put it down and recalibrate it first. You put both sticks to the outside corners, you can hear it beep and flash, now to recalibrate. So now let's uh, try and trim it. It's a very stable quad. It's got large propellers. Hopefully you can see there. Very stable. Need some throttle management. Here is a full throttle punch. This is full battery, full throttle. So you can see there. Not terrible, but you know, not that bad. But with the large propellers, it's not that responsive. It's a little bit of more of a weight carrying. Um, set up more weight, which is good because when you get it in the water, it's gonna fill up and it'll be pretty heavy So hopefully that'll help get it out of the water better So hopefully that's what they're thinking about when they uh, made it looks like I need one click of yaw trim There and then you click the right bumper cycle through the rates This is low rates yaw mid rates and high rates right there. So it's got decent yaw, but it's you know it's a little sloppy to fly indoors because it's not that responsive and it can have troubles as you see there holding its pitch and yaw during a hard turn because it's having trouble uh, spinning up the prop fast enough since it's a heavier prop. And then you can do some flips. If you, hmm, I'm not, says I am taking video there. So the lights flash on here to take video. You can see I'm taking a video. You see how it's flashing there. So that's really helpful. It won't let you uh, flip when you're taking video. So it gives uh, throttle before and after the flip. You can see there. So, you know, pretty decent flips. They're not the tightest, but they're flips. If you want to get into that. Yeah, it flies pretty well. The controller's not that precise. Um, it kind of... Like once you get to a certain point, it just goes all in. It's not doesn't have much resolution to it, so it's a little hard to fly indoors without hitting stuff. I've crashed a couple times already while I was testing it before this flight. But you know, I think for outdoors, it's a very fast quad. It'll fly pretty well, which is it's meant more for outdoors, especially uh, since it's waterproof. So that's good enough for the indoors. So let's go take it outside with some, do some flying out there, see how fast we can get it, take a little bit of footage, and then we'll go and drop it in the lake and see if it actually is waterproof and if we can get some underwater footage. I don't know. Let's take it outside. All right, so here we are headed down to the lake here, and I've got everything in this little GP Toys bag that came with it. It's certainly not the best way to carry stuff um you know i've got the prop tool the screwdriver the quad and the remote in here like it's not gonna be very protected but you know you can carry stuff it actually is a pretty nice bag so i right, to include it all right so here we are let's get caught out should have brought some spare props Ugh. all right and we'll set the quad here Right there, and turn it on, and we're good to go. So, start off in low rates here. Got a full battery in there. And I did some more uh, charging and flight testing between the indoor flight and this, just for a more review type video. I know more about it, and um, I'm beginning about uh, six minute flight times, which is decent, and um, it's been taking about 50 minutes to charge. So. Not the quickest charge times, but you do have two batteries, and I was doing both of them at once. So that's pretty nice. So let's go, let's go into high rates here and see how fast this guy can go. Full speed. It definitely does slide out on the corners. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, definitely it has the problems that, uh, like if you can see that, on that yaw there, that like it just spins out. The controller does not have very much resolution to it. Try mid rates, and it also doesn't have quite enough power to sustain full pitch. But you know, flies pretty good, nice and fast. Definitely not. Uh, it is smooth, but you have to be very careful on the stick so you don't spin out. So let's um, start some video here. Let's see, yep, the lights blinking. So let's just uh, go up a little bit. 
I'll turn around. The lights definitely do help. I'm, I'm sorry for the video lighting. I know it probably sucks because it's super dark out and drab. So stop the video. Let's just go up a little bit and for the fun of it, take a picture right there. See the light flash and do some flips. All right. So yeah. Flies decent enough. Definitely pretty fast. I imagine it could fight some wind, but there's absolutely no wind out right now. Let's uh, get some close-ups of it. Looks pretty cool. I like the all orange. Definitely will help you in the wa over water or in the water to see it. So I think that was good enough. So now let's swap in a fresh battery as we're going to need some power. And let's see if we can get it in the water here. So All right, we've got a fresh battery now. So uh, let's turn on the quad. Turn on the remote here. Good to go. And the uh, wind has picked up a little bit here. This is not an ideal spot. Just because of the way it is here. But... Uh, test the water on uh, direct access to all these weeds but let's put it in mid rates let's start the video recording lights in the on there and let's ooh, ooh. oh yeah quite a bit of wind so it's a testament if it can fight the wind I've had to put it in high rates bring it back here see we touched down the water there you see that there? And it says in the manual you have to keep the remote close because the water uh, blocks the transmission. Obviously the radio. So I'm just hovering it above because it will sink, I think, if it goes under. So let's put it under. Oh, that's... Oh, it's really full of water. You can see it's draining out there. Those holes on the bottom let it drain. But it actually was able to um, come back up after it sunk, try and get it to sink. Oh, nope. <laughs> it's stuck down. Let's see if I get my remote really close. Nope. <laughs> nope. The lights are just blinking. It's not coming back. I gotta grab this now. couldn't get a signal or something even though I was that close so it is waterproof it looks like yeah this is uh, and it can come back out of the water it looks like so I think that was good enough for the test and we'll uh, stop the video so that does prove oh man that water was cold it does prove that it is indeed waterproof. You can, oh, I got <laughs> stuck in the grass there. You can see it still works fine after that. But it certainly kind of is more of a novelty feature. I mean, because once you get more than, I'd say about this much water, even that close signal can't penetrate through. But it was cool that it could go underwater and then propellers spin it back up to the top and then it could lift off and it had enough power and then to drain the water out the holes. So uh, yeah, we'll check out the video footage there. It'll probably looked pretty cool underwater. And yeah, let's go back inside and finish up. All right, so here we are back inside. And overall, you know, it's a it's a decent quad. Um, as you can see from the camera footage, the camera is pretty awful. I mean, the the field of view is very very um, narrow and it's very fuzzy. However, um, if you looked at the underwater footage when it was actually facing underwater, the camera actually didn't look that bad underwater, and it is. It says on here, meant to take underwater video, so, you know, I'm pretty sure that's because it's, they, they tuned it to be working underwater, but when you get to the water, it fills up and sinks. It would be awesome if it floats, but it sinks, and then it can't come back out of the water. I actually might have been able to. Um, I, didn't, I read in the manual that um, this is just common sense that I knew already, but I f forgot when I was testing it. Um, the water is going to block the radio transmission from here, so that's why it 
I thought it like it just knew it was in the water and shut down, but maybe because I because of the water it disconnected from the remote. It says to keep in their manual, it says to keep the remote 20 centimeters from the water to keep it close because it blocks it. So the remote or the manual is actually pretty nice and detailed and gives you some stuff and it also says to make sure everything dries before you charge it, which is a nice little tip. Um, this little bag is just, it's it's kind of nice to keep your stuff, but it's not that helpful, but it's nice to include it, I guess. The prop tool is nice. I love how it has dual batteries with a double charger. It gets uh, six minute flight times with a 50 minute charge, which isn't bad. Um, probably my biggest gripe is with the transmitter. It's not, doesn't have very good resolution. Like the difference between here and here, there's not much difference in the speed or if any, like it's kind of almost all or nothing. So you have to be careful on how you um, pilot it or else you're going to be spinning out on the yaw and pitch a lot. Other than that, it's a pretty nice quad. Um, I'd like to thank Gearbest for sending it out to review. I'll leave a link down below to their site if you want to check it out. I believe it's somewhere around $30. Um, the link will be down below. So yeah, please subscribe if you want already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.